Joshua, am I audible? Yeah, okay. Representing green honchos, uh, yeah, we've got some prolific founders here, I'm sure. Uh, the rest of the 20 minutes will be a breeze. Bhavik, get vantage. Uh, Dheeraj, Campus Sutra. Uh, very interesting topic about unit economics, profitability, scale, that's all we've been talking about, uh, especially at this time. Uh, who better than get vantage in Campus Sutra to you know, talk about these areas? I'll, I'll kind of open the can of worms, but if you can do your own introductions from your own perspective, it'll be much better. You want to go ahead? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, so I think we have a nice, intimate audience. Uh, and so I'll just love for everybody to, uh, you know, A, give us, give us a quick raise of hands. How many D2C brands in the audience? How many enablers? D2C brands first. To just try and make our D2C brands? Uh, seven, eight of them, yeah. Fantastic. Superb. Uh, how many enablers? How many working in the ecosystem? Great. Great. So I think this will give us some color to make this conversation as candid as possible. Um, I think, Naveen, with your permission, we'll yeah, try yeah. and make this uh, less of a gyan session and more of let's have an exchange, let's have a debate. Uh, we've, been, we've been trying to say let's, let's make it debatable and uh, provocative. Uh, in approaches as well. You can take uh, on the role of the moderator also. No, 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 yeah. My role is very simple, yeah. I call myself an operator and founder, like many of you in the audience. Uh, I am no investment banker, no investor background. Uh, my simple introduction is 15 years plus building businesses uh, in India and the US, uh, built a digital business called It's Cash before this. And so, truly understand what are our challenges on a daily basis as an operator, as a founder, you know, what are the different cycles you have to survive, and how do you try and make a business that's sustainable, that can survive long term, right? Sure. Uh, so I think that truly is what we try to do at GetVantage, uh, provide that unfair advantage to a lot of businesses, brands, emerging brands and founders, uh, and we do try to do that by giving not only capital, which I believe is important for everyone and all forms of capital for a business. Uh, and how do we do that in a much, much more founder-friendly way, in a business-friendly way? Um, so truly coming from a founder's attitude uh, and understanding that no one theme. So right at the onset, I think the debate is important because no one journey is similar and no one path is the right path, right? We have to keep recalibrating, rebalancing, realigning. Uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, running a business, uh, but trying to do it in a much more fundamentally correct and sustainable way. So we'll try and speak about that from financials, unit economics, sure. etc. So that's the quick background. Sure. Thanks. Great to be here. I think uh, this meet, I think there have been too many sessions from Campus Sutra, so <laughs> I'll skip the introduction actually, <laughs> and uh, would love the session to start. Sure, and no, I'm glad to be able to do that. Um, yeah, we've. we've Let's talk about the you know, taboo term of the funding winter. And when I talked about that, uh, you mentioned uh, summer and monsoon <laughs> and winter again. What does it do? What should D2C brands be thinking about? Uh, is there any fear? Is there any uh, silver lining? Is there any um, you know, opportunity uh, from where we've seen it in the last six months? How and what should D2C brands, from your perspective of use case examples because I think you work like us, we, we, we talk to D2C brands on an ongoing basis and it's so lovely to see the energy that they bring to it. Uh, but sometimes the, the North Star metric keeps moving. Of course. So <laughs> yeah, your commentary on that, please. Yes, go ahead. So I think that whatever winter slowdown or whatever we've had, right, is the best thing that has happened to the ecosystem. Right, uh, it's something like uh, uh, it's something like playing on Indian pitches versus playing in England. Right, यहाँ पर तो सभी मतलब छक्का मार सकते हैं. So what was happening in two years back, or what was happening in 2021, was that uh, business, especially D2C business, in many ways was just becoming about creating revenue or creating GMV. Right, what is management? हमारा belief है और the thought system in Campus Sutra is that management is the art of managing constraint. And if you look at D2C business, mainly, I'm sure there are 20s of it, there are 20 or 30 variables, but mainly there are three variables. You have revenue, you have cost, primarily your COGS, and then you have advertising, right? At some price, all products sell. So 
So that's that's our basic belief, right? That if you keep reducing price or if you bring a price below the selling price or whatever, everything will sell, right? Same thing with advertising. That right? if you keep plastering the the ad or the product in front of the customer, no matter how good or bad the product is, at some point of time, someone will pick it up. But business is all about making sure that the equation works, right? That whatever cost of the product versus at plus advertising plus whatever value you are creating in the business, that needs to work. If you leave aside the third component, the overall business kind of you know, ceases to be important. So I think what was happening till a couple of years back that raising money was becoming the differentiator. Jisne sabse jada paisa uthaya, he was the winner, right? Which actually, to, to be very honest, is not what business is all about. So I think in the current environment, uh, what is going to happen is that you'll have a lot of stronger businesses emerge the guys who had been just focusing on the GMV will start focusing on the bottom line and creating value, which is very important. And I think uh, this is more important in D2C than say a network business, right? If you if you compare a, a business that say a Flipkart or Amazon is in, that's the business of last man standing. So there'll be one dominant player and then one or two dominant players and then there is no space for others. Whereas in D2C, in brand, in the business of brand, you will hardly accept maybe, you know, mobiles or some other categories like that, you will hardly have any brand which has more than 10% market share. Uh, I always give this example that Zara, which is a Spanish company, even in Spain does not have more than 10% market share. Your brands like your L'Oreal, your whatever, you know, HUL, Lux, all the, you know, legacy brands that we have, in most of the categories don't have more than 10% market share. So it, it's not about creating market share, it's not about only creating uh, top line. It's about creating value for the customer and then in turn creating value for all stakeholders. Great. Well, so Bhavik, I think he, he has stoked the... <laughs> no, but I'm actually, Naveen, I'm actually going to uh, take his permission and use this next time. It's like the Indian team playing on the England pitch. <laughs> I'm going to use that with the funding winter analogy. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially after yesterday's... Uh, <laughs> I think that India's... Uh, yeah. No, yeah, I, I think I completely agree. Uh, just taking that theme ahead and I think... You know, Naveen, I have always spoken to you about your business and how you built it as well, right? You built it to survive and laugh. Yeah. Um, and I think my biggest takeaway personally as a founder first is in the 10, 15 years journey of building businesses, not only in India, even in, in the Valley, right? Uh, we were building a tech business in 2008 happened in the Valley and we saw blood on the streets in San, yep. San Francisco, yep. right? My only takeaway from that, and in 15 years, I think I've seen at least two or three cycles now, uh, to simply share with everybody that like every year, like every annual year, there are going to be four different seasons. Every winter is going to be followed by spring and by summer and by autumn then, mm. right? You just have to last out and build your business to survive different cycles at different times. And what we mean by survival is, have the pulse of your business and understanding of your fundamentals, right? You might be chasing different targets at different phases of a business. Sometimes you're focusing on growth. Uh, sometimes you're focusing on revenue. Sometimes you're focusing on bottom line and profitability. And being able to just calibrate between all of that to ensure that you survive multiple cycles. Uh, and personal experience, uh, after every cycle, we've actually seen a better upside. You know, 2008, I saw the cycle in the valley 2009-10, I was able to sell that business. Uh, 2016, we saw demonetization, a down cycle, but for its cash and as a fintech, a, digi a digital business, it was an upside and we were to take an exit two years from there. So I think every down cycle only gets you ready uh, to be able to really capitalize on the next cycle. Okay. Uh, and so my takeaway is just be financially disciplined and have a good pulse of how your model plays out so that every time you want to calibrate, and there will be different phases. Sure. Uh, you have to sometimes invest in growth. Yep. Uh, I actually agree with uh, Dheeraj in saying, but I'll take it one step further. I think even in Amazon and Flipkart or network business, India, unlike anywhere in the world, has proven it's not a winner-take-it-all model. Mm. VCs and venture capitals don't like it, uh, but truly, India is not a market that you have a one-winner-take-it-all model. More democratic. Right? It's going to be a homogeneous market. There's going to be enough opportunities for many players. Uh, and I don't know whether in which sector or industry it's going to be 10% market share or higher or less. But yes, macroeconomic, you have to invest in growth in India right now. Sure. How do you do it in a much more sustainable fashion? That's 
the financial discipline and engineering you have to decide as an operator and founder for your business. Mm, great thoughts there. I think, uh, Deeraj, if you can just add to the same, which is the importance of survival and, and those cycles and then thriving. I think, uh, uh, very honestly, survival, if you're looking at surviving in business, it's the wrong way of approaching business. You're not in business to survive. You are in business to, you know, create something great. Right? Uh, SCBR, entrepreneurship is very, very difficult. Uh, before starting Campus Sutra, I was with Walmart for six years and I keep telling this to my friends and family. That, you know, I might be earning 10, 20 times higher, but life was much more peaceful in the corporate world than it is now. Right? <laughs> so, so you you don't want to be doing this and then just surviving. Right? Already itne hajaro tension hai, usme survival ka ek aur upar se talwar latak rahi hogi to problem hai. You, one, need to be passionate about what you're doing, one. And second, at an overall level, you need to be creating value. So unless until you think, you think that you're creating value uh, to the ecosystem, to your customers, to the stakeholders in business, I think you're in the wrong business, right? Uh, unfortunately, uh, what happens with a lot of uh, this funding up and down is that, uh, and again, uh, just my uh, kind of, you know, view may be different for different people, but... Uh, Many times businesses and founders end up chasing the investor's dream. So which then kind of, you know, uh, maybe doesn't allow you to take decisions which are good for business overall and in terms of creating value. So you need to know what you're creating, one. Second, you need to be creating value. You can't be in the business for survival. Sir, yeah. Nafro, good, good thoughts. Uh, I mean. And I want to bust, I, I, at exactly this juncture, I want to bust two myths. When we think investors and when we think funding winters, we're really talking about equity investment. I think for everyone as a founder, I want to absolutely openly share this. I think Dheeraj has had a long journey. I have had a long one. As a business, you need all forms of capital. And please do this. Uh, sorry for sounding like a professor, but Google search two types of funding. And there is equity and quasi-equity. Right? I think the seasons and winters, we are very perplexed by this this theory that's been created that investors are only equity investors and VCs, right? I think there is all forms of capital that your business needs. You need equity investment that really does help you experiment, take off, depending on your business, your strategy, doing R&D, some capex investments. But then there are quasi-equity structures. And I'm using the word quasi-equity because I'm trying to stri strive and bre break the myth of the word debt. Okay, not every other form of non-equity dilutive capital is debt. Debt can be termed as long term, three years, five years, you take longer term debt, etc. But there are capital advances, revenue based funding, there is inventory financing, there's marketing capital for every different aspect of or your use case. And so when there is a winter in one type of equity investment, there will be another season in the quasi equity investment. So your business has to be ready for all seasons and your business has to take all forms of capital. And there are many alternative forms of capital. I mean, look, here's an example how much I've interacted with Dheeraj and Campus. He's built a bootstrap business, mm. right? And, and I think, Naveen, to a large extent, even the business you've built, oh. right? So I don't think there is anything like a funding winter. When there is, you know, day somewhere, there is night somewhere. And just being very smart and aware as an operator, as a founder, that taking all forms of capital for the right use cases and fueling that area of growth, that work area of efficiency. Capital is not only for growth, it's also for building efficiencies, right. building cash flow management, right? Uh, so just taking those other two levers that let's not get glamorized by just one form of capital, build, truly build a business like Dheeraj said. Let's build a business fundamentally, uh, right. let's build a brand, and I think that's, that's what the biggest takeaway is. Oh, great insights for me as well, obviously, for all of you too. But uh, there was a question, I was doing a keynote this morning, uh, and there was a fashion D2C brand that asked me uh, in the Q&A, can a fashion D2C business be unit economics positive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to you to answer, because you're probably... <laughs> And, 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 and uh, I, he, Dheeraj is the expert here, yes. but I, I will take the first take on this, and I'll say, yeah, sabse pehle to, I think you all have heard it probably many times now, I will re-repeat it, reiterate it. D2C kya hota hai, yaar? You know, you're building an emerging brand. You're an insurgent brand. You're building a brand. D2C was probably the channel you started from because in the new age, you were able to get going with that first channel. 
but and i'm not going to give you the gyan that every business and every brand has to be omni channel but every business has to be multi channel all of you who raised your hands as a brand uh, and, a, and a d2c brand just look inside you're trying to build an emerging brand of today and tomorrow right so we always say this right even the word startup is loosely used i think all of us irrespective of the sector in the industry are building an emerging brand of an emerging india sure. if you're looking locally uh, and so approach it from that you will have multiple channels multiple different strategies for multiple channels so whether a category of fashion or not you know as as get advantage navin we keep sharing data with you that you know we've backed about 18 20 categories sure. and i think every category has different ros different roi yep. uh, different profitability matrix and margins uh, but i think one fundamental and i agree with dheeraj yaar you know i think again the roots of being a business if you're building an emerging brand that lasts you have to be a profitable business sure. business has to make profit at the end of the day probably not today probably in 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 a few time or few years uh, but wo to banana padega sure. otherwise you're not really building a business yeah nahi i think uh, very honestly profitability in fashion mein to koi problem hi nahi hai mm. if you can't build a profitable fashion business then there's something wrong with you very honestly you know <laughs> matlab so that's like the first thing the problem with fashion business is but how do you define fashion so fast fashion any fashion high fa- like any fashion if you look matter. at any successful fashion brand world over is any brand working on loss no right matlab you start from the nike zarida zara you know any fashion brand the world over it's not a technology business where or it's not a you know a, a infrastructure business where there's a lot of capital going in in at the start and you'll start making money after 10 years that's not what fashion business is all about so fashion business has to be a profitable business the problem with fashion business is scale right uh, so uh, you know in india and we always say that right so in india if you look if you take a 8 to 10 year horizon and you see brands who have done 100 crore plus in fashion and have survived for 5 years there are hardly 5 or 6 in india right so the problem in fashion business is scale because with scale the complexity of the business increases unlike lot of other categories like fmcg or mm-hmm. beauty and personal care and all that yeah. but profitability is not a problem in uh, in fashion so you know uh, that's about it and uh, and again i think koi bhi d2c business koi bhi brand business cannot be non profitable right you can take certain investment decisions whether it is in terms of marketing in terms of you know building some capabilities building a certain brand but that has to be written off in the first 2 3 5 years it can't be that ki you know i am spending 100 crores on marketing today and ye 10 saal ke baad profit hoga um, again uh, just to share walmart example right uh, and i was in walmart i think in 2006 right ek humne uh, was kind of lucky enough to be in some of the planning discussions initially to hamara ek target tha ki 60000 crore karna hai indian market mein and wo 12 saal ka target tha main wahan 6 saal tha har saal wo year change ho jata tha I'll get remain sixty thousand. Right? Uh, unfortunately, that's what happens in lot of D two C business. Sab ka saw do so panch so hajar crore ka target hai. Wo three saal ke baad panch saal ho jata hai, panch saal ke baad dus saal ho jata hai. You know the year keeps changing. So that's not what business is all about. I don't need to tell you what happened to Walmart business in India. In spite of being Walmart. Mm. So if they could not do it, for us to think that we can build a non profitable business which will start making money after ten years, I think we are we are uh, living in fool's land. Thanks, thanks. It's, it's great validation coming from someone who's scaled a fashion business uh, profitably, rather than us uh, theoretically saying yes, that's possible. Uh, but probably last words from you, but I have a different question, and then we can open it out for any Q and A for the last five minutes. Um, so, get vantage. And you've backed and studied and advised a lot of D2C brands, and use the word capital and use the word efficiency. A- any good examples you can give founders here of how some businesses or brands you can even it doesn't need to be it can be anonymous, but how are they able to do it efficiently? Anything that left a mark in terms of your uh, being able to see? No, I think there are umpteen case studies, and uh, you know it's always fun to come out to an event because you know we've backed about five hundred, six hundred businesses, and you get to meet so many of the founders uh, uh, of businesses you, we've been able to back and help and, and fuel their growth. Uh, I think the first biggest takeaway when I spend time with a founder and a business, uh, sharing some insights is, yeah, every founder should have a financial toolkit. What is this financial toolkit, right? Have all your options open, available for what are the different forms of capital and different forms of partners you can take capital from, right? 
uh, every founder should absolutely start his journey by, we don't have to be finance experts, but you have to at least have an understanding that there is different capital for my different areas of growth. That's, that's the first starting step. I think the second thing has happened is, and literally in our journey uh, of the last two, three years, what we've seen a massive change is, and how many of you all are seeing this, right? That now every funding round also that you're seeing getting announced is all, and so many more founders are being smarter and raising hybrid rounds, right? Your announcements are a mix of equity and debt. And I think quasi-equity, quasi right? <laughs> You know, and we use the word hybrid, and I think that has been very, very good. Where at least the first awareness is that, look, I take this capital and I take this capital, and what do I do with it? And I plan it smartly. Uh, just two, three examples. I can give you guys some great brands across uh, D2C products. I'll also give you, if you're a services business, if you're a subscription business, what's really worked and what we've seen brands do well is. Understanding the cash flow cycles, and the one biggest takeaway that has been common across a mattress brand to a fashion brand to a coffee brand has been understand your cycles. You will need a quarter to ramp up inventory, then you will need a quarter to increase your marketing. You will have a quarter where you have a seasonal time. And so it's going to be a mix, just understanding that really well as an as a operator uh, and calibrating yourself to that. I think that's only the magic mantra. Buzzers probably for all of us, but any questions from them? Maybe one or two minutes and we can be done. One question? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Just one question, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so, as I was talking about constraint, right? Returns is a constraint in online business. The problem happens when you start thinking of returns as a problem. It's, it's not a problem, it's a constraint. This is what the business is all about, right? Uh, you can't do away with returns. So whenever you're building your PL, balance sheet, your pricing strategy and all of that, that needs to go in as a cost element. So again, when you're approaching returns, you need to approach from the fact what is controllable, what is not controllable. Jo controllable hai, obviously you kind of, you know, it's a continuous process, you work on that, you improve your returns. But what is not controllable, you, uh, you don't even think about it. You don't even track it. You start building that in your cost structure to make sure that the business works. We are in markets where the returns are 60%. And it's not for our brand. It is overall. We are, uh, and I, I don't want to name the uh, markets, but there are markets where the returns is 60%. There are brands in those markets which have returns of 80-85%. And still they make it work. Right? So whatever is the reality of the market is the reality of the market. Usko kaise banaoge, kaise karoge, wo khud pe okay. Thanks, I think we're out of time. Thanks for being a magnificent fireside chat panel. Uh, any further questions, we're short on time. We'll, we'll be around for a while, I'm, I'm hoping, and you can catch us there. Thank you. <laughs>